What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another magical edition of the Bombastic Podcast presented by Natty State Sports and hosted by yours truly, Pierce Andrew Wells Ellis. That is my full name. I don't know why I said it this time, but we're here. Uh, the vibes are strong here at Natty State HQ because Arkansas just finished off a sweep over Murray State. Um, we're going to talk about that. We've got a very special guest coming on very today's program. Just wrapped up a great interview with Jake Faraday, junior right-handed pitcher for Arkansas. You may remember him from getting the final outs against Oregon State in Arlington, which we know it is tough to get those final few outs against Oregon State if you're Arkansas, but Jake Faraday was able to do it, and he was kind enough to bless us with some of his time and join us on today's program. Loved getting to talk to Jake and just hearing a little bit more about his story and sort of the journey he's had at Arkansas and I encourage you guys to give that a listen because it's it was it was really interesting to hear from him and I think it you know it just make you make it easier to root for him man he's been here been been here at Arkansas for a few years finally now getting his chance to show that he's one of those dudes and he's a guy you can count on uh, so I've enjoyed watching him pitch and I really enjoyed getting to sit down and talk talk with him for a little bit uh, great kid really enjoyed that so stick around later on the show for that um, guys I'm gonna keep it a buck with you I recorded a whole podcast this morning. <laughs> Whole, co- whole today is so f- peek behind the window. I am speaking right now on Monday night. You will be hearing this on Tuesday. I came in early Monday morning after the sweep, was fired up, ready to ready to get after it, ready to bring the hard takes. Recorded a whole podcast, and there were some tef- technical difficulties. I'll just say that we're not going to point fingers. We're not going to blame anybody. It was just me and Scotty in here, so you can choose who to, who to blame. I was the only one sitting in this room, so maybe I'm the one to blame. But you, you know, it's we're a team here. We don't we don't point fingers. <laughs> it's not it's nobody's fault, unless uh, of course it's my fault. But you know, it is what it is. But moral of the story is, uh, I had some thoughts that I kind of wanted to get out there. I got them out there in a video that is now ruined. Uh, so it is what it is. We'll never get that one back. But before we get to the Jake Faraday interview, which was an awesome one, we really had a great time. Uh, I did want to kind of just touch on a few of. Things I touched on this morning whenever I was talking into a mic that went into nowhere. But uh, just a few of the, my, my big takeaways from the series. So obviously Arkansas comes away with the sweep against Murray State, who if you listen to this program on Thursday, I kind of warned you. I was like, hey, man, this Murray State team's pretty good. This might be a little bit of a trap series. Like, I don't know. This, you know, this is not the type of series you can sleepwalk through and expect to win. Uh, so you, some of you may have watched that series and be like, man, Andrew's an idiot. This Murray State team sucks. But uh, I would just like to point out for you guys, one, mean – hurtful I don't like that uh two I think this I don't I don't you know feel any differently about Murray State I think we're gonna see I mean who knows maybe they'll just get into conference and suck but uh you know I think back James Madison I didn't think they were that special they they took a game from Arkansas opening weekend I think we were all collectively a little underwhelmed those cats have not lost since they left Fayetteville they're on a seven game win streak now they're now eight and three that Oregon State team that Hagan Smith and Jake Faraday shut down uh, they have not lost a game since playing Arkansas. They're eleven and one, one of the best lineups in the country. Uh, Oklahoma State's been playing some good ball. Even Michigan took two of three from whoever they play. Or they went out to California and had a little series and took two of three there. So like Arkansas has been playing good competition. I think it just speaks to how special this pitching staff is. Y'all don't need me to tell y'all that at this point. We all see it and we all understand this is a special Arkansas rotation. Seems like it's kind of the popular take now to be like, hey, maybe this is the best. We've ever seen at Arkansas, but I've been telling you guys this on this program for weeks. I've been trying not to hype them up too much, but, I mean, you see what it is. Hagen Smith goes six innings, strikes out 12, only gives up one hit, which happened to be to the first batter he faced who hit a, a opposite field home run off of him. Uh, and I was talking to, you know, you'll, you'll hear later on this program, but Faraday and DVH both kind of agreed. Like, whenever that home run got hit, they, nobody was worried. They all knew he was about to shove and uh, kind of, if anything, maybe just gave him a little pep to his step. But Hagen Smith balls out. Brady Tiger goes five innings, gives up, I think, two or three hits, one run, strikes out a career-high 10 guys. DVH said earlier today at the Swatters Club that might have been the best he's ever seen Brady Tiger. Uh, hard to argue, man. The fastball location was on point for Brady. Love seeing that from him. I think, you know, he's gotten better each start. I mean, he's had three starts this year. You know, pretty solid in week one. I thought took a nice little step forward and was really good in Arlington. Didn't, didn't give up a run there. Went six innings, a career high. Strikes out 10 in his third start. Like, I think you're starting to see him whip, whip it into gear a little bit. And Mason Molina continues to be the best Sunday starter in the country. It's it's kind of crazy that he is the Sunday starter for Arkansas. I mean, this is a guy who was, a, was an ace at Texas Tech last year. He struck out 10. 
all three starters, they're only they all gave up one run each, all three on solo home runs. Uh, I was actually telling Hillary, my beloved girlfriend, this weekend, I was like, hey, you know, Hillary, solo home runs don't beat you. I had a coach tell me that one time. I'm sure anyone listening to this who has played baseball at any level has had a coach tell them that solo home runs don't beat you. But, uh, you know, solo home runs did not beat Arkansas this weekend. So, hey, it is what it is. But just quickly touching on it, I wanted to take a look at some of these numbers. Hagen Smith and Brady Tiger, no, Hagen Smith and Mason Molina, pardon me, the two lefties, it's stunning how close their lines are. So Molina's pitched, he's gotten two more outs, 13 and two-thirds. Hagen's done 13 innings, both given up five hits. Hagen's given up four runs. Molina's given up three. Hagen's walked four. Molina's walked five. Hagen struck out 31. Molina struck out 29. Uh, opponents are hitting 109 against Mesa Molina. Just outrageous number to read. I mean, you look at Arkansas's top five guys in terms of innings. I'm talking Colin Fisher, Brady Tiger, Mason Molina, Will McIntyre, and Hagen Smith. Will McIntyre had a great weekend through, I believe, five and two-thirds inning across two two games. Unbelievable. But uh, just looking at those guys, your opponent's batting average, 172, 157, 109, 180, 114. As a team, Arkansas opponents are only hitting 174 against them. Uh, you know, they their team ERA is now 245, which – you know, again, we you can argue if they face great competition. I would argue they face some pretty good lineups. Uh, definitely, in the last couple of weekends they face some good lineups. I mean, that Murray State team is as old as any team they're going to face this year. Ton of veterans, ton of returning production. Those dudes are going to hit a lot. I mentioned Oregon State; they're going to hit a lot. So it's not like you know Arkansas is doing this against rough competition. Arkansas leads the nation in strikeouts with 163, uh, and they're you know they're like 10 ahead of the next team, who I believe is either LSU or Florida. Um, and if you look at like the, that top five nationally in strikeouts, it's like Arkansas, Florida, LSU, Wake Forest. Like it's it's legitimate teams, it's legitimate arms, and you know I'm not saying Arkansas is going to be that dominant every week, especially on the mound. But you should look at this pitching staff, man. It's living up to the hype and more, I would say. Uh, and that starting rotation, I mean, I just what what more can you say about them? I don't know what else there is to do. I mean, this these dudes are nasty. I think everyone should be enjoying every minute they get to watch some of these arms at Arkansas. And, you know, we'll talk about the bullpen a little bit, but I mean, like Jake Faraday, who we had on the program, great pitcher, throws 98, doesn't even get in the game this weekend. And I mean, he's not alone. Arkansas only used five relief pitchers. You know, you had Will McIntyre throws over five innings. Cody Frank had a really good outing on Friday, struck out the side in his first inning. Gabe Gackle, friend of the program, gets his first career save on Friday, brings him in, bring him into another high leverage situation. He even got into a little bit of a jam, one that wasn't even really caused by him because he had a, uh, a drop third strike that kind of led to them bringing the go-ahead run to the plate against him in that opening game of the series. Didn't bother him one bit. Uh, Gabe Gackle gets the job done. It seems like that's a dude they really trust. Uh, we didn't see Stone Hewlett, the big lefty, this weekend. You know who we did see, though? It's Cooper Dossett. I say Dossett. I've been saying Dossett, but I heard Dave earlier today say Dossett. So that's what I'm going to roll with, even though he also tried to tell us that it's Vaheva Alloy and not Vaheva. I don't know. I'll trust DVH on every topic, even if he's wrong. I'll trust him on this one. Uh, but yeah, Cooper Dossett, the Springdale boy. Cooper Dossett's a guy I thought was going to have a huge, I thought he was going to be a huge freshman for Arkansas last year. Wasn't healthy in the offseason, never really got a chance to, to have a consistent role. Uh, had a pretty good summer in the Northwoods League. He was teammates with Jason Jones and Christian Fouch, and I thought he had a nice little summer there, got some quality experience, finally gets on the mound Tuesday against Grambling, strikes out the side, and is like 96, 97, just chunking. He gets in the game against James, or no, against Murray State on Saturday, did not strike out the side, but retired all three hitters he faced, struck out two, was pumping 95, 96. Seems like that's an arm that's really going to help him. Uh, if there was a, like, quote-unquote bad outing of the weekend, it would be Gage Wood, who only got one out, gave up a run, gave up a few hits. Uh, DVH talked about him a little bit today at the Swatters Club. They still have a lot of confidence in him. He throws a ton of strikes. They need him to start putting dudes away, getting those strikeouts. I mean, we see him, he racks up strikeouts. It's almost like he throws too many strikes at this point in his career. Um, but Gage Wood, you know, I, I feel like better days are ahead for him. I love his stuff, love his mentality. I mean, you just look around this Arkansas pitching staff and – it's hard not to feel good about some of these pieces. I mean, Christian Fouch is a kid that I've always been really high on. I love his stuff. He's 96, 97, nasty splitter. Uh, he pitched against Grambling. I imagine he'll pitch tomorrow against UCA or today against UCA. Parker Coyle's another one. That sophomore class, we'll see what they have going on. 
also had some breaking news. I'm glad, you know, the one silver lining of me screwing up the podcast this morning is I get to come to you with the Dylan Carter news that I was uh, blessed with by DVH. Dylan Carter, you remember him from last year? Kid from Bentonville, went to Juco, went to Crowder, comes to Arkansas, red shirts in 2022, uh, pitches last year and ends up kind of getting thrust into a massive role in the middle of the year. Arkansas had some injuries. They really leaned on Dylan Carter heavily. I mean, he was one of their top arms going into SEC play and was pitching a lot. All of a sudden, he has Tommy John, has, has you know, tears his UCL, is, is on the on the shelf. And, you know, DVH said today he didn't expect him to pitch in 2024 at all, but he made it work. And so, you know, credit to him. Uh, every, you know, all offseason, kept hearing people were asking about him. And I, and I was even telling people, I was like, hey, just relax. If he pitches, cool. But if he doesn't, like, you know, Tommy John's usually about a 12 to 18 month type of recovery. So when someone tears their UCL in mid April, you're probably thinking, okay, he's probably maybe could maybe be back at the end of next year, but really probably not. DVH says he's on the board to pitch Tuesday against UCA. So, hey, we'll see if he gets in the game. Hopefully they have a situation where they can give him a clean inning or whatever. But the fact that he's even available and like potentially could pitch for this team is is really a testament to how, how much work he's been putting in behind the scenes. And DVH was even saying he's been up to 95. Uh, you know, in some of his bullpens, he's been facing some hitters live. I mean, this is a guy that was 91 and 92, maybe 93 on a good day last year, touching 95. So, I mean, a guy that was a very valuable arm for Arkansas last year, you're just adding him to the mix. I was joking with Jake Verity. I was like, yeah, that's what you guys really needed was another arm is what you guys needed. Uh, but, man, credit to him. And now, guys, let's just talk about the elephant in the room, which is this lineup. Because I think that's the biggest takeaway from this weekend is we keep thinking we have any degree of clarity uh, I don't know if DVH read my story last week or not, or if he listened to the pod on Thursday where I kind of broke it down and went position by position. But a lot of the positions that I told you that, guys, that there was not no controversy. I lied, and I didn't mean to lie to you. I just I thought that this team, you know, I thought I thought we had things a little bit more figured out. And I don't mean that in a bad way because I think all these options I'm about to talk about are solid options. But uh, center field, you know, I wrote last week that I thought Ty Wilmsmeyer, just what he brings to the table as a defender, the experience he brings, the athleticism he brings. I just felt like he was going to be your starting center fielder no matter what. Uh, DVH referenced him as the best defender in the outfield that Arkansas has. Hard to disagree with it. You see some of the plays he made. He made that great diving catch the wall. And obviously he's been in this league for a while. So I think you're okay with losing a little bit at the plate with him. And this is also a guy who hit 300 in the SEC last year. So it's any of that Missouri, which again, we've, we've established is not a real SEC school. But they do play real SEC school. So he hit 300 at an SEC school last year. Like that, that tells you that he's not just some scrub. Um, DVH said it himself. Like they need that guy to show up. They need the guy who's a little bit of a threat. Hit seven home runs last year. Brings a little bit of that pop. You know, hasn't had a ton of it. He's hitting around 240. Had a nice opening weekend, but since then hasn't done a ton. And we saw Will Edmondson, who just continues to be undeniable. Man, like whether it's left field, whether it's DH, whether it's just pinch running, whether it's whatever. It's. I think we've established now. Will Edmondson is going to help this team, man, and uh, it seems like they 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 feel comfortable starting him at center. Uh, he's a really good athlete. I know he can cover the ground. We haven't seen his throwing arm really tested a ton lately, but he and Jason Jones. It seems like you know we thought that was going to be a big position battle. Who's going to win the left field? It seems like you can't really take either of those guys out of the lineup. And you know Jason Jones is only. I think he's hitting two forty or two thirty five right now, but he leads the team in RBI. Uh, you've seen him hit some balls really hard. You kind of see the vision of the power potential. I think he's done enough. I think he had a hit in every game this past week, including the Grambling game where he hit two home runs. I think Jason Jones with the power and what he brings to the table, I feel good about keeping him in the lineup. I think he's earned the right. Uh, and Will Edmondson, he's hitting 300. He's getting on base a ton. He's stolen four bases. Uh, I mean, dude, he just keeps doing it. He's only struck out twice this year. You know, it's crazy. Some of these guys I'm about to talk about being in position battles. Will Edmondson, only two strikeouts in 24 plate appearances. Peyton Holt only has three strikeouts. Uh, and he's struggling to get in the lineup at second base, man. And so let's just talk about that. So the big picture here is Peyton Stovall's out with an injury. We've talked about it plenty. We don't know exactly when he'll return. DBH said he could return next weekend for the conference opener against Missouri. If not, you're probably looking at the Tuesday after that, and then he would be ideally available for that Auburn road trip in the second week of conference play. But, I mean, we're maybe, you know, 10, 12 days away from Peyton Stovall returning to the lineup for Arkansas. I have no reason to believe right now that he would not slide right into second base and start there. 
Uh, DVH even said he's probably going to put him in the leadoff spot. He's kind of waiting on him to get back. He feels like that's his leadoff hitter. I'm going to take him at his word. And from, you know, all indications are that Peyton Stovall is doing well behind the scenes. He was having a good offseason. Like, they feel like he's about to take that step that we've all been kind of waiting on him to take. Um, and until further notice, I expect him to be starting at second base, which, you know, going into the season, I would have told you means Peyton Holt is going to be starting at third base. But how do you take Jared Sprayglide out of the lineup? I mean, he's leading the team in average. He's hitting 417. Uh, he's maybe the best defender on the infield that they have, although he does have five errors this year, which I feel like the scores in Arlington maybe maybe gypped him a little bit. But I don't know how you take that guy out of the lineup. So if you're keeping him in the lineup, you're probably taking Peyton Holt out. Now it comes down to DH catcher. I mean, Hudson White caught two games this past weekend. Swung the bat pretty well on Sunday. I liked what I saw from him. I also like what he's been doing as a you know catcher behind the plate. I mean, he had a little bit of some shakiness on Friday. I mean, I mentioned he almost almost screwed Gackle there while he was getting a save. Uh, but I feel like one thing he needs credit for is he's calling a lot of these pitches. And that's one thing Arkansas trusts their catchers to do. So for this pitching staff and all, how, the, how much success they're having, I don't know how much we can give to them without also giving that same respect to the catchers who are calling the games. And so whether it's Ryder Helfrick or Hudson White, they've been doing a pretty good job. Helfrick hasn't hasn't hit the way that he's capable of and the way that they kind of expected him to, which is probably leaving the door open for Hudson White to start every day behind the plate. And I think if you're a guy like Jack Wagner, who we saw start at first base, we've seen him start at DH before, and if you're a guy like Jack Wagner or a Peyton Holt or a Ross Lovich, who's kind of in this outfield mix as well, he's been swinging the bat well from the left side. Uh, if you're one of those guys that is trying to get in the lineup, you probably want Hudson White to win the catcher job. Because if he doesn't win the catcher job, he's going to be dh But if he's not dh that kind of leaves the door open for one of those guys. So I think that's kind of where we're at with this lineup is – I don't know how you take Jared Spraglot out. Will I feel the same in 10 days? I don't know. You could probably make the same argument for Peyton Holt. How do you take that dude out of the lineup? But the guy we've been seeing starting at second base is the Hawaiian kid, the not Vahiva Aloy Hawaiian kid, Nolan Souza. How about that? The Honolulu native, uh, true freshman, hits his first career home run on Sunday, 108 off the bat and 398 feet to the opposite field. I was really struggling to explain to Hillary how impressive that is for a freshman to be hitting one opposite field 400. Like hitting a home run 400 feet as a freshman, that alone, hitting 108 off the bat, that alone tells you you're a really talented kid. To do it oppo and kind of almost, I mean, you know, the wind was a little interesting. It was kind of right to left, but that, that was such an impressive swing, man. And I, I just, man, I you know, going into the offseason, it really wasn't on my radar. Or going in, into this season, I should say, after watching the offseason, it really wasn't on my radar. I saw Nolan Souza have some moments in these scrimmages. I think his, his one of his first at-bats of the fall hit like a 400-foot home run. So you knew the, the talent was there. And DVH said physically, he's as, he's as gifted as just about anyone they have. He's a freak athlete, really good runner, big, strong kid. Uh, I mean, you know, I mentioned he's hitting, he's hitting opposite field home runs 400 feet. And he's a good def- he's a way better defender than you would expect given how good he is at the plate or how much power he brings to the plate. He had his ups and downs in the scrimmages in the offseason to kind of face in that SEC pitching. There was a little bit of an adjustment period there. So, you know, going into the year, I thought he'd get some chances, but I really was not expecting this guy to potentially be having an everyday role. But, hey, credit to the kid, man. He's really forced the issue here. It's going to be interesting. And I think when Stovall gets back, it's just a, another layer you add to this lineup that – is really deep, man, and you know the lineup has not produced maybe to the level that people were hoping. Who knows? I thought they swung the bats better this weekend, hit 294 as a team, so you know that's nice to see. So we'll see how it shakes out, but overall, I thought it was a really productive series against Murray State. Uh, Arkansas took care of business against a tough opponent. You guys don't have to believe me. I'll just we'll see how it plays out down the stretch. I will gladly do my victory lap in April if they're like. Nine and one in conference play or whatever. Uh, I think that's a good team. I think that's an older team. The fact that they only scored five runs against Arkansas is pretty crazy. I mean, they were hitting over three hundred coming in. I know they hadn't faced Arkansas pitching, but man, I just I think Arkansas's pitchers are going to do that to a lot of teams, and so it kind of takes a little bit of pressure off of this lineup and a little bit of pressure off this bullpen and guys like Jake Faraday, who I'm sure you're dying to hear from. So we're gonna get to that, but before we do, we got to remind you. Go to manscaped.com, promo code Natty for 20% off. Get your beard trimmers. Get your other parts of your body trimmers. Do whatever you got to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of your date. 
Nobody does it better than Manscaped. One of the highest approval ratings of any of our... I mean, we have a few ad sponsors that we really like here, but Manscaped, people really love that one. Uh, love hearing... For, lo- love love our Manscaped stuff. I might Next time, I might wear my shirt that uh, it says Manscaped, and on the back, it says, your balls will thank you. And Curtis, funny story about that. Curtis was walking through Whole Foods and forgot he was wearing it. And he was like, man, I kept noticing. And by the way, I'm, I am I make the Curtis Whole Foods joke a lot. I really didn't even intend to do that. Normally, I do it during my alumni hall read. Uh, I don't, Curtis was actually literally walking through Whole Foods because that's where he shops for groceries because he's part of the 1%. Uh, but he said he kept getting weird looks. And he was like, dude, I feel like three or four people have looked at me weird. He forgot he was wearing his Manscaped shirt. It says, your balls will thank you on the back. But go check those guys out. And reminder, promo code Natty for 20% off. Also, don't forget about our boys over at Alumni Hall, the ultimate shopping destination for Razorback fans. Go check them out at the store. When you go get your Whole Foods, just dip right on over, right across the road, right? You don't even have to get on the on college. Just right, right, right there, that same shopping strip. Go see Alumni Hall. You will not be displeased with what you see there. If you want to see your selection, you want to maybe pick, you want to scout it out, go shop online at nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. Again, nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. Go get your hats. Go get your jerseys. Go get your pants. Go get your leggings. Go get your whatever. They've got it all. Again, you will not be dissatisfied with what you see. If you go check out their website, the, the link I just said to you, nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. Now you'll be able to see the whole store, clothes for the kids, clothes for the parents, the grannies, the aunts, the uncles, the dogs, the cats, whatever you got. You can get their clothes at Alumni Hall. And if you love baseball, you're definitely going to love it because they've got all the hats. I saw a bunch of people last night uh, or throughout the weekend wearing their yellow hats, wearing their charcoal hats. You can get it all at Alumni Hall. So go check those boys out. And now it's time for Jake Faraday. And actually, before I say that, I just want to let you guys know, we're going to replay the intro. And I I even like said, like, hey, welcome to the episode and all that stuff. Just deal with it. It is, is what it is. Instead of an awkward transition, you just get to rewatch my beautiful intro Go listen to this. Enjoy this, Jake Faraday. Enjoy it. He's a great kid. Deep left field. Out of here. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another special edition of the Bombastic Podcast, hosted by Andrew Ellis and presented by Natty State Sports. Today, I've got a very, very special guest. I promised I would have a special guest soon, and eventually came through. Uh, we've got... A great pitcher, junior right-handed pitcher, Jake Faraday, who is not from St. Louis. For some reason, I was telling him right before we went, all, went live, I just keep comparing him and Jacob Cossie shocking my brain. So I just, I guess I just assumed you were from St. Louis. You're from Kentucky. Yeah, thanks for how did you, how did you end up in Fayetteville from Kentucky? Let's just start, let's just start with the important topic. Let's jump right in. How did, how the hell did you get here? I was, I was supposed to go to junior college out of high school and then Coach Hobbs, I think he saw a video of me pitching. And then he gave me a phone call and got an offer and couldn't turn it down. Had to come. Do you remember, like, right before your freshman year started, there was a video of you throwing, like, 98 in a pitching lab? you remember that video? Yeah, I, do. I do. I don't know if you knew at the time. That video, like, set the stage for your career. About every week, people would be like, hey, what about this Jake Faraday kid? I saw a video of him throwing 98. Yeah. That video set the bar really high for your career. Everyone, like, immediately was like, we got to get Jake Faraday. I saw a video of him throwing 98. That video has stood the test of time. That summer before I got here, it was, there was a lot of videos really hard. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So obviously, I mean, we, we got to start right there. You throw extremely hard. For those that have, that have not seen Jake pitch, he throws very hard. It's, uh, I would say your defining quality. Yeah. How, I mean, obviously, you've been, I'm sure you've been throwing hard for a while. Talk to me about like your velo progression. Like when did you start kind of separating? Was it when you were like young? Were you just always a kid that threw hard? I threw like 88 my freshman year of high school and then I think it was a junior. <laughs> did you say you threw 88 as a freshman in high school? Just casually threw that in there? Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> Compared to some guys, like I know Hagen, he threw 92 probably when he was 12, 13. But um, it was probably my junior junior fall. This is some showcase for a junior college, and I think I hit 94. And then by the spring of my junior year, I think it was 97, 98. So like growing up, did you were you like I'm assuming you were the best player on your teams growing up? Like growing up, were you kind of one of those kids that just always threw hard? Um, I threw hard. I never could really hit, but I threw hard. Could play a little defense, but hitting was never really there. 
Yeah, I'd, I would get DH for whether I was pitching or right field, whatever. I was yeah. back in the day, back in high school, you would DH for like your third baseman. Back that's that they were at whatever position I was playing. That was that's who I was getting DH for that day. I was the same way. It is. Uh, do you remember that video of Todd Peterson at LSU where he hit in the SEC tournament and then was like, I didn't even hit in high school. Yeah. <laughs> My buddy was on that team, and so we always talk about that. But uh, yeah, man. So I just I've I've I've, I've got to imagine. So I never threw hard. The hardest I ever threw. I remember when I was in high school on my senior night, I threw a ball as hard as I could, just to see how hard it was. Eighty one. That was that was as good as I could get. So you you casually being like, oh, I threw eighty eight, and as a freshman, psh, is what it is. Fourteen year olds don't throw eighty eight, man. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Uh, but no, I just I've, I've always been like, man, if I could throw hard, my life would be so much easier. So I just wondering, it has to just give you a little bit of a confidence, just walking into any room, and you're like, none of these dudes can throw harder than me. Um, it definitely did before I got here, and then <laughs> here, and it's not really special. Everybody, everybody throws hard. Everybody can do what you do. Yeah, that's sad that they've 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 talked it out of you to now you just think it's normal. You're like, oh, my 98 and 99. I mean, now you have you touched you've touched 100 before? I would imagine, right? I hit 100 first time before I got to campus. Goodness, dude. Video, but it was never. Was that like the first? Was that like the only time you've ever hit it? Have you no, hit it? I hit it my freshman year here, um, in the Fowler and Inner Squad. I think I hit 101, actually, to Kindle. Digs. Yeah, and then since then, no, I think I've got up to 99 few times you're washed up man i know <laughs> only touch of 99 geez oh. was it like a huge deal like the first time you threw 100 was that like did you like celebrate was it how, how was that um it was kind of cool it was my first or it was my last bullpen with like the guy i trained with for many years back home right before i went to school so it's probably like the week before i came here and it was cool i mean i was fluttering with it 98 99 the past couple months and then Finally hit it, and it was real. It was fun. I think you should put that in your Twitter bio. <laughs> Through 100, at least a couple times. It would be a good. That would be pretty good. Well, i got to be honest. You're not like, if I looked at you, I wouldn't be like, this guy throws 100. I've got I'm just being honest. Time. Just yeah. wouldn't think that. Uh, but I mentioned Jacob Kostyshock, another dude who probably, you know, at least he was like 6'5". He was a little bit taller, so it's like maybe, are you 6'3"? On a good day. On a good day? My <laughs> license is 6'3". Can you dunk? I can you can't dunk. Okay. Just making sure. If you were six three and couldn't dunk, I was gonna, I was gonna, I wasn't gonna say anything, but I was gonna secretly be judging you. But just making sure. Our uh, our basketball guy Curtis, he's six four, and he maybe can still dunk. He's he's getting up there a little bit. His knees are getting a little, but he's like very judgmental. If you're over six foot and like can't dunk, he's like, Psh, just not a real athlete. Yeah, I can see it. But Jacob Kostyshak, I feel I you know I was telling you this right before we went live, but like you remind me so much of him, like the look, the stuff, like just your career arc and just everything. So like, have people been telling you that for a while now? So I, I never really heard it until this year. Coach Hobbs was like, you really remind me of him. I mean, whole career, how things have went so far. And then you're like pitches, how everything does, your body you're built the same. Yeah. You kind of look the same. It just it is what it is, man. It but dude, Costi shock like at least like with you when you were you know early in your career, I remember going to those scrimmages and like you catch you on the right day and it's like oh crap, like this yeah. dude's he's ready to <laughs> he can close games as see right now. Then you you know you see the command or whatever. But Costi shock, I remember giving up on him when he was a sophomore. I was like this dude <laughs> is never gonna figure it out, man. It's it's so crazy how that works where it's like especially with pitching where it's like just the littlest tweaks and then all of a sudden a guy that you never really thought much of is just a just a dude out there, man. Uh, I don't know if you know Andrew Hutchinson covers covers the Arkansas Razorbacks. So last year, so he has kids, so he can't go to every scrimmage. Right. Every time he would show up to a scrimmage going into last year and you were pitching, mm -hmm. you would be lights out. <laughs> like I think it was the fall classic. You struck out the side, yeah. Yeah. like touching 99, and he was like, dude, Faraday, he's turned around. And I was like, I saw him last week, man. I was, he, he didn't look this good last week. But then and then you would like struggle when he wasn't there, and then he would come back and he'd be like, dude, why are you this dude Faraday is like the, the best that's pitcher true. ever, man. <laughs> so maybe that's just the key. Andrew Hutchins has got to be in attendance whenever you're yeah. pitching. I'll, I'll make sure he's he's at all these games. But uh so you know, it, well, we don't have to get too deep here. Or anything but just the, your first two years at Arkansas when you think back on it like was there a, I mean I'm sure there's some moments when you're not playing and you're like man like this sucks like was there a moment where you really were like hey maybe this isn't for me maybe I need to go somewhere else um I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I never really thought about leaving it was I knew I could do it here and I they took the chance of me when I first like blew up and my freshman year so this is the place I wanted to well you mentioned that you uh you were you were thinking about going to JUCO before Arkansas because I was looking at it earlier. I was doing some extensive research before we had this 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 professional sit down. I was like, man, I gotta get my stuff. But you weren't like a massive recruit, you know, which I thought was interesting because one, one division one offer. 
and it was Arkansas. It was Arkansas. That's crazy how that works, man. But just just kind of a diamond in the rough, I guess. So I guess is that part of you know, like you said, they were the only Division One team. So is that why you were like, I'm sticking it out here no matter what? And it was like I knew, I had confidence in myself. I'd fi- I knew I'd figure it out. And I knew it yeah, would make an impact. Well, I'd say I'd say you uh, you've definitely figured it out, man. I'm uh, you know we're looking forward to seeing you know the future and how this all plays out this year, man. You're one of a lot of guys who have it figured out on this pitching staff, it seems. But uh, how much does it help also of like, you know, I'm sure you're friends with Will McIntyre, who you've seen he's gone through a similar thing. Where I mean, there was times where I was like, talk about people you give up on. Like I, I really was like, man, I just don't think it's going to happen for Hit Will. Like who knows? And there's been so many guys. I mean, Kevin Copps is like the ultimate one. Where yeah, dude, really, if COVID doesn't happen, Kevin Copps is selling insurance somewhere right now you know he's he's not playing yeah. you know but it's just kind of so did that give you a little bit of confidence of seeing some of these other stories seeing some of your other teammates who kind of had to work their way through a few struggles and then kind of find their role later yeah and it definitely did and like I had some role models back home Chad Martin who's my pitching coach back home he, he ran into some of the similar struggles I had when I got here when he played at IU Indiana gotcha so when he got there he had similar struggles and he was able to like talk me through them like Help me mentally stay there and just let my let it work itself out. Gotcha. Let's talk about your pitch arsenal for a little bit. So obviously the fastball, you no know, ninety six, ninety eight, mm-hmm. not bad. Hard slider, right? Yeah. Do you, you throw like a cutter or something? Is there something I, in between there? I throw a cutter and then I throw a slower, bigger slider, but it hasn't been <laughs> has been has been as good. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay, so is it really just like basically a two pitch mix for you? Yeah. You know, because sometimes I'll be sitting next to the trackman while you're pitching, and you'll throw something that's like 92, and I'm like, mm-hmm. "What the hell is that?" I'm like, "I don't know what that is." It's like obviously it's not your fastball, but I'm like, "Huh?" So I, I was, I knew there was some other pitch that you were kind of messing with. Gotcha. Sometimes it doesn't cut as much as I'd like it to. But. Yeah. Well, you know, it seems like. It. Let, let me ask you this though. Now, everyone, I know. Let's remove Christian Fouch's splitter from the equation because everybody I ask this question to, they're like Christian Fouch's splitter. Do you have any of your teammates where you see them throw something, or there's some pitch that you're like, I need that. Like, I want to learn that. I mean, I couldn't go couldn't go wrong with Brady Tiger's curveball. Yeah, that's not a bad one, isn't it? Left hand. I mean, anything Hagen throws, I'd probably be okay with. Molina's changeup. Yeah, his changeup was cooking yesterday, man. It's good. How fun is it to watch these uh, these starting pitchers throw, man? I mean, like every, we've we've all been talking about it as like you know the fan base is all crazy about it, but I mean just seeing it like and knowing these guys, like how fun is it to just go out there and like when Hagen's pitching, it's like I don't have to worry about getting loose until maybe this fifth inning, maybe you know you don't have to worry about pitching. I mean, I think the craziest was first batter of the game on Friday night. He gave up home run, and then I don't think there was not a soul in the even the park that was like had any question about what Hagen was going to go out there and do for the next, what, five, yeah. six innings, however many he threw the Friday. And, I mean, the other two guys are having careers that, like, this year is probably their, all their best years, and it's going to be fun. I'm glad you said that because I feel like a lot of times, like, when you look back at some of the best Arkansas rotations, like, I remember 2019 they had Isaiah Campbell, Connor Nolan, and Patrick Wicklander, where, like, you hear those three names and you're like, oh, that's great, but Patrick Wicklander was a freshman who they didn't really trust. Nolan was, like, still on the freaking football team at that point. It's like, <laughs> it wasn't like all three of those guys at the peak of their powers. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, even Campbell the year before with Blaine Knight, like, Campbell wasn't Isaiah Campbell yet. But you got three dudes who are juniors, going to be top picks, you know, like it's rare that you see a starting rotation like that in college baseball. I mean, I mean, just think about your time in Arkansas, how uncertain the weekend rotation, like every week, yeah. like last, last, year, last year was TBA, TBA, TBA. Yeah. Uh, we haven't even had to ask Dave, hey, who are you starting Friday? It's like Hagan's getting the ball, Brady's getting a second, Molina third, but uh, kind of takes some pressure off of you guys a lot. I mean, I feel like obviously the, in a weekend like this past weekend where like, I think, I think you guys only used four or five relievers. Will McIntyre is was three of them. <laughs> it's like yeah. kind of crazy where it's like, really? I mean, I'm sure that you'd rather be pitching more, but is that nice where it's like they're not asking you to come in and f- throw four, five, six innings, three, four. You just kind of like you get to come in and just either get the save or do whatever. Like, is that exciting? The whole staff, even the starters, because like they know the bullpen's always fresh behind them. They don't have to worry about if they get into trouble early. Like they have no fear in what the bullpen can do. And I mean, Will, he wasn't fresh on Sunday, but. He pitched better Sunday, and he probably did on Friday or on Saturday. So it's cool. I feel like you know, with a lot of guys like you, like obviously you're a power pitcher, and there's y'all have a lot of power arms there. I feel like Will's like immune to all of it, where it's like 
he's not, he's probably better on his third inning than he is in his first and probably better on one day's rest. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that though. Cause DVH, I heard him talk at the swatters club today and he was saying how, you know, early in the year, you're trying to throw guys out, see if they can handle whatever. He said that he learned that he shouldn't throw you back to back days is what he said. Is, do you feel like that's true? Um, I, I you don't have to talk bad about, you don't have to argue with your head coach publicly here. Really went back to back days till the summer and the second day was normally not as good as the first day, but and it'll be something that I'll need to. He told. He said that uh, you told him you were. You were like, oh no, I'm fine. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, throw okay, me. I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yeah, say yeah, no. Well, you can't tell him no. <laughs> No, don't give me the ball, coach. Yeah, well, wrong. You can't tell him that, <laughs> man. So I mean, you know, I, I not to not to get weird, but just how exciting is it? I mean, you've thrown more this year than you had in your Arkansas career combined. The first two years, like, how exciting is it for you to be in this position? Obviously, you didn't throw this past weekend because the starters were just cooking, and Will McIntyre wanted to be selfish and take all the innings himself. But uh, you know, how exciting is it? It's like now you're on this team that it's probably the best team you've been on at Arkansas. You're right there in the mix at the back end of the game, and like you're able to really show what you've got, and you're able to do it, you know, for your team. I'm sure this is kind of what you've been waiting for, what you've been dreaming for, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's exciting, but like I'm just trying not to let it get the best of me. I just treat it like I still have some, I have something to prove. Still, like it's what I do. It's just good to be out there competing against other teams, not just the guys in the team. I got pretty old this fall and spring, but it's good. It's fun. Well, you seem to uh, you seem to handle it pretty well in the Oregon State game, which I mean that was one one of the craziest games I've ever seen, ever covered. Like just from start to finish. I mean, you got Hagen. It was probably the best game I've ever witnessed with my two eyes. Oh man, it was great. And then you get to be there on the mound at the end of it. Uh, and as we know, it's really hard to get those final outs against Oregon State, especially for Arkansas. It is. Uh, so how about that? You were the guy who got to got to get the final outs, man. That was seriously. I mean, you could tell by the way the team reacted that that was a big moment for you and individually but also just for the team i mean it's a big win yeah. uh just talk about that moment and just what was that like of the kind of it's like the culmination of your career a little bit where it's like hey you you're kind of arrived this is your moment now it was kind of funny i didn't wasn't really expecting to go in the game gage was in the game the eighth and the ninth and i was getting loose but it was kind of like gage is going to do what gage does and go get his outs and we're gonna win this game and then i think it went single and a bunt they got the bunt guy the guy that bunted out and then DVH walks out to the mound, and I was like, oh. You see, is that when you knew you were going into the game? When you yeah. see DVH walking, you're like, oh, crap, he's really coming to me. Yeah, and I was like, here we go. And then I was a little nervous before I walked out of the bullpen, and then once I stepped on the field, it was kind of – lights kind of went out, and then it was just ready to go. So do you even, like, remember any of it? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> okay. I, remember I remember it. But, I mean, I felt like my heart – it wasn't even nervous. Like, I feel like – Going in, like looking back, I should have been nervous, but I wasn't nervous at all. We were Gage, his yeah. fresh, his first, I guess it was his first career outing where he's, you, right? yeah, and he's like, DVH said when he was getting the ball from him, he was like, Shaking. <laughs> yeah. and so it's kind of cool. I mean, and obviously he gave up the big, the long ball, but it's good to see him come back and have a good outing and pitch in that same setting and kind of face his demons, so to speak. But uh, how cool is it also just being in a big league park? I mean, like, not not often you get to pitch like in a moment like that. In a, Global life. It's the I mean, it's one of the nicest parks you can ever. It's massive, have. man. It's just so big. So big. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, you're gonna get to pitch in a lot of cool, a lot of cool parks this year. Although I will say, you know, this is a little bit of a tough road schedule. Normally, you know, you get to go to Mississippi State, you get to go to Duty Noble, we'll get to go to the box or whatever it is. The road schedule is not as great this year, but man, those some of those environments in bomb. I mean, how how excited are you thinking about? I mean, you've you've obviously been around and been yeah. seen that, but it's like to pitch in those weekend. You know, where it's like Florida's in here and you're, you know, closing out a game like that. How exciting is that? It would be fun. I mean, first time, like, I've really felt it was in Arlington, of course. But and now, like, Saturday is one of the biggest crowds I've seen this early in the season. And it'll be – I know they'll pack it out. And it'll be loud when SC rolls around. So talk to me about this summer. So you're in the Cape. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you know, last year – wasn't an ideal year for, I mean, and you just whatever. So how excited were you to get up there and kind of start throwing and just what was it like kind of, you know, having to prove yourself and pitch? I mean, you're facing elite competition too. How big was this summer for you personally, just as a player, person, whatever whatever it is? I mean, I think it was good. Like, I was a little banged up last year and went to the Cape and just kind of first outing didn't go as way as I wanted to. And then after that, it was pretty good. Till towards the end, it was it some rough outings. But – it was good, like my coach there, Coach Smythe, like he had faith in me, believed in me, and it, I think that's what helped me with the confidence that I needed to pitch well up there. felt like every other week I was seeing like a perfect game 
some scout or whatever was like, we found this Jake Verity kid. Where the hell has this been? Doing? And like, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It was like hog fans who probably didn't even really know who you were, but they're like, Oh yeah, this guy's awesome or whatever. Yeah. Um, you That's know, cool. yeah, it is pretty awesome, man. So, uh, talk to me about some of your teammates. So who do you, I think Peyton Holt told, told me the other day he lives with you. Yeah. Who else do you live with on the team? Who are your, your boys? I live with Holton Kendall. Okay. And we are our fourth roommate. Yeah, he just goes to school here. We're one of Kendall's good buddies from back home. So y'all have just a non-baseball player living with y'all? We do. <laughs> What's that like? It's cool. I mean, he loves baseball. He goes to every game. He was at Coastal. He played soccer at Coastal his freshman year. And he transferred here. So he's cool. Interesting. And Hagen. I mean, I play catch with Hagen every day. Learn from the best. You know. So did you know anybody when you first came to Arkansas? Like, did you have any friends on the team straight up, or were you just like just uh, showed up? So when I showed up, they thought I was they thought I was a manager. <laughs> Super long hair, glasses, <laughs> kid. Like, yeah, they thought I was a manager. That's that's tough. So you didn't know. So like, you really just didn't have any have any. You didn't know anybody uh, prior to. I mean, I never met them. I heard of them, you know. Yeah. But I never. Was it nerve wracking coming to Arkansas? Where you're like, you know, you were you said you were expecting to go to JUCO, then all of a sudden it's like now you're at Arkansas and you're with all these dudes. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. Not as much meeting the other freshmen because like we were a little nervous, but that first day in the locker room with Zebulon, Cole Ramage, every Connor, yeah, it was like, oh, here we go. How how important was were those older guys on the team? Like you just mentioned a few of them, like getting you settled into college baseball a little bit. They were all great, you know, good role models, had great careers here, and it was. It was good to have them as a freshman to look up to. It's a little bit weird. You know, you've been in Arkansas three years now, and, like, it's pretty much a completely different team every year. I mean, last year it seemed like there was, like, two returners on the team. Uh, is it a little bit weird, like, where it's, like, almost every year you got to meet a whole new cra- crop of people and stuff like that? I mean, it's it's a little weird. Like, there's definitely less of a dynamic of, like, freshmen to the older guys. But, like, I mean, we're a good team. Last year the team was – Super tight. This year it's not as close, but like it's still close. Like we still, when we step on the field, it's still a close team. Now, last year's team, you said it's super close. Like, was that right away? Like in the off season, all you guys were just straight out, y'all were boys right away. I mean, as soon as it's like, as soon as everybody got to campus, it was like we've been playing together for years. Interesting. Gotcha. So, do you think that's something like maybe this team could develop? Like, or do you think it's just kind of it's just a different dynamic, not necessarily like worse or better? I definitely think it could. I mean, it's pretty much developed, but like, there's you know, like guys, there's a lot of guys who are never had a team like we had last year, or like we have this year. Even they've kind of like done their own thing, which is fine. Like, it's cool. Yeah, and I feel like it's just y'all have such an interesting team. I mean, you got yeah. your middle infields from Hawaii. Uh, you got some Arkansas boys. You got some Texas boys. Some Cali boys. You got a kid from freaking South Korea. I mean, you've got just it's like a whole melting pot there in Arkansas. Is that kind of cool? I feel like this is the most diverse. It's definitely cool, and it's definitely cool to see like how different guys act, different situations. I mean, it's like the Hiva. He doesn't take practice swings. Doesn't take practice swings. Well, next time he goes up to bat, he won't take practice swing. Huh. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's it's interesting, but yeah, I mean, what do you you know to each their own or whatever. But uh, let me ask you this: who's who's someone, whether it's pitching staff or hitting, that you feel like is like underrated? Like people aren't talking about enough that you feel like is is a bigger piece of this team than people realize. Maybe when I asked uh, Will McIntyre this question, he said Hunter Dietz. He was like Hunter Dietz is the pitcher that people are not yeah, talking about that they need to. I agree. I mean, they just don't know yet, but we saw in the fall. I'm sure you saw. It. I saw a little bit. Yeah. It's special. I think he's. I think he's. He might be back by April. Is what DVH was saying yeah. today. I think last time I heard LSU season or series, hopefully, but I don't think they're going to rush him back. There's no. Reason. I'd love to see him against LSU, man. I hate LSU. My best friend played at LSU, and I still hate LSU. Born born in Central Louisiana, so yeah, I'm I family, Northern Louisiana. Really? Where? What? Uh, what part of? Who? Homer. Homer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Claiborne. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know a couple people in that that area. Yeah. Louisiana is, is an interesting place, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So we keep me in mind when y'all are against LSU. Have a little extra motivation. Yeah. Screw those guys. Yeah. It's tough, man. But uh, are there any other games? Any other games that like stick out? I mean, obviously you get to go back to Kentucky. You get to go play at Kentucky. I mean, did you did you go to Kentucky games growing up or anything? I went to them um, really before they built their new stadium when I was a kid. Um, I had a, one of my good friends was Brad Bohannon was his uncle. Gotcha. He was at Kentucky. <laughs> we used to go to the games. 
Brad Bohannon, interesting figure in college yeah. baseball. So was like that year pretty much like your college baseball experience. Like, had you gone to other big college baseball games before growing up? I've been to a few Louisville games, but other than that, there's not really any good. There's not really any college baseball in Kentucky. Yeah. So did you like know what you were coming into? Like, I'm sure you had heard of Arkansas and like heard of some of these SEC, seen SEC baseball, yeah. but like, was it kind of eye opening when you got here and you kind of see it and you're like, wow. Um, I mean, you, I've seen it. I saw it on TV, but. I really didn't understand it until the first game, opening day. I was in the dugout and you looked around you and there was... Dude, I remember talking to Tavian Josenberger after a fall scrimmage last year, and he was, like, baffled, like, that I was trying to talk to him. He was like, why Why are you trying to talk? He's like, why are there fans here? He didn't understand yeah. any of it. He was, like, baffled. He's like, there's more people at this scrimmage on a random October afternoon than there would be for, like, Kansas weekend series against Creighton. Stone, Stone said the same thing. Even like, I think it was our midweek last week. He said the same thing to me. He was like... Is this normal for you guys? <laughs> like, yeah. And you're like, when the weather gets better, it'll be, there'll be better. tons of people. I mean, when y'all play Texas Tech at home, mm -hmm. that's, there's going to be 10,000 people in the stands yeah, for that. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, man. But, uh, yeah, how about how about y'all just taking the Kansas dudes? They're just making a pipeline. I mean, Wagner, Josenberger, Hewlett. I mean, geez. It's fine with me. They're all good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Who's uh? So obviously, you know, you have to, you have to face your own hitters a lot over the years. I mean, it, it must like you said, you're tired of facing them. Who's one that like really gives you like that you really hated your least favorite one to face? One this year, Kendall. Kendall always got me. And then this year, Viva. I think he was seven for eight off me. Really? In the fall in the spring. I know in the spring it was four for four with a home run. Yeah, if if Viva could only face Arkansas pitching for whatever reason. That dude's like the best hitter of all time in those scrimmages, man. I, people think I was like lying because I was hyping him up so much going in the air. I'm like, dude, he homers like every scrimmage, man. It's crazy. He'll he'll figure it out. Like, yeah. He's had a little bit, but it'll come. You know who told me he's going to figure it out? John Bolton. I saw him in Arlington. He was like, he will figure it out. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. John Bolton's a stud, man. I like that. But uh, who are uh, – let, let me let me let's, let me talk to you about some of these sophomore pitchers like Christian Fouch, Parker Coyle, Ben Bobby. I feel like that group is kind of the X factor for y'all's whole team. Yeah, you know if those guys are good, then I feel like it just kind of takes yeah. this pitching staff to another level. When you think about that group, what kind of sticks out and like what are you what are you expecting from some of those dudes? The jumps that Christian, all of them have made, like from last year this year, are crazy. Like Parker, I played against him up in the Cape. He shoved like. No yeah, he was he was great in the Cape. Yeah. yeah, no other way to put it. And this fall he shoved. And I mean, this year's outing against JMU, it, he th I thought he threw good. It was just kind of yeah goes way. But and then Christian, like, I mean, he's commanding everything so much better. He's splitters, <laughs> splitter. That's splitter, man. <laughs> his, I mean, his sliders come along and Bybee. I mean, I haven't seen him throw. It feels like forever. Yeah, he's been out, but I mean, he's gonna be good. Yeah, who were uh who are the guys on the team that keep you guys loose? Like who's the funniest? Who are the funniest people on the team? Bivy for sure, hundred percent. I feel like I've heard his name a couple times now, which like kind of surprised me a little bit. But you never guess it if you just saw him. But kid's funny. So do the pitchers and hitters? I mean, I guess you live with Kendall and you live with Peyton. So you live with hitters. Yeah. Is it like? Is there, do the pitchers hang out with pitchers? Is it or is it kind of um, all just intermingled? It's kind of tough. Like our practices a little bit shorter than their practices, but. So we get out a little earlier, but like at the field, we don't hang out as much. But like out of the field, everybody hangs out. As nobody really thinks about. When I was talking to uh, Gabe, I asked him like what his relationship with DVH was like, and he's like, "Dude, I've only talked to him like three times." You know, because he's not on. He only been on campus a few months. So like, what, what's your relationship? I mean, you've at least been here for a few years now. So like, what's your relationship with the head hog been like, and has it evolved a little bit? So probably, I've probably talked to him seven times. You know them all. <laughs> eggs meeting my two eggs, two eggs meetings my freshman year takes the ball from me in my one appearance, and then same thing last year, and then this year. I mean, after the game against Oregon State, he talked. To me. I guess this year he's talked to me quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, about, now that he knows you're a horse that he's going to ride a little bit, he's like, I better start, better start yeah, getting to know this yeah. kid who's been here for three years. But uh, do you remember what he said to you when he handed you the ball on the mounds? Yeah, he said you're the man for the job. That's what he said. He said, "I was just making sure y'all you know, stories lined up or whatever." But I remember noticing that he, you know, normally he really doesn't say a ton, you know. But I could tell he like wanted to say something to you, which I thought was really cool. But he made sure I was looking at him. <laughs> he started to say it, and I was looking down, and then he waited until I looked at him and he said it. 
I mean, did I mean, I'm sure it helped a little bit, but like, how cool was that moment though? Of like, you know, especially considering that you, it's not like DVH, it's not like you hear from him every day. How cool was it to know that he's putting his trust in you in this moment right there? It was cool. It definitely helps. Definitely lowered the nerves. Kept kept it cool. Uh, what's your and I'm assuming you talk to Matt Hobbs a lot more. What's what's your relationship kind of been like with him over the years? And just I mean, I, I'd assume if you didn't like Matt Hobbs, you probably wouldn't be here. So I just imagine he's been a big help. Yeah, he's been a big help. He's I mean, there's probably thousands of things he's helped me with over the past two three years. Um, he's good. He helps. He knows when you need to figure something out on your own. He knows when he needs to intervene and help you out with something. I feel like he's just a, he's got all the numbers, you know, I feel like he just, he sees things that like normal human brains just wouldn't pick up. So I was just, I didn't know if there was like some weird thing he told you that you're, you know, showed you some weird numbers and he's like, Oh, that changed the way I threw whatever. Well, I, it did kind of. Uh, so this fall I never stopped throwing and uh, I was throwing like 75 to 80 mile an hour bullpens, which I've never been able to do. And gradually my arm slot went lower and, the ball kind of started to sink out of my hand and then he was like eventually when I started ramping back up he was like let's just throw sinkers so it's kind of just what what I started doing it I think that's I think in Arlington when you were throwing your fastball I think he was reading as a sinker or something yeah. and that their their board was kind of it was interesting how it just posted up there McIntyre dude they had a hell of a time trying to figure out what he was throwing they were I like bet, I bet Frank they had a tough time oh yeah uh but yeah I, I remember noticing and in Hagen it would be like 99 mile an hour sinker and I'm like that's just stupid <laughs> like that that's how it is but uh yeah I mean you know just Matt Hobbs man he's a wizard, he is a wizard. I feel like people don't understand like how He's definitely under us, or they take him for granted. They don't put him as high as they need to put him in the league. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, do you feel like what you, you know? You don't seem like the most like bombastic, like outgoing, like rah rah. I don't think you're giving the speeches to the team. But what's your role as like a leader been like these? You know, because now you're kind of like one of the older guys. Like, is it is it changed a little bit? It's definitely more just like by example. Like, I don't. I'm not very vocal. I'm not very. You know, I've not had a career like some of the other guys have had here, so it's like some guys don't look up to me, but it's like the ones who need advice or want advice, I can try to help them in there whenever I can. Is there any any freshmen that you've, like, spotted out, you, like, took them under your wing a little bit? Any of the, any ones that you have, like, that yeah. kind of relationship with? I had to help Gabe out a little bit. Interesting. Oh, yeah. He was – we were in the bullpen for the fall classic this year, and he probably played catch for 40 – 50 minutes after he already played catch, he's about to go in the game. I was like, Gabe, relax. <laughs> you relax. You're <laughs> tired, man. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's kind of everybody looks up to Mac and Hagen, so, and I mean, as they should. I mean, we've seen what Mac's done for the past three years here, and it's Hagen's, I mean, it's Hagen Smith. Yeah. You say. Well, and Hagen, it's so interesting because, like, obviously, Hagen's not the not a super vocal guy either. Uh, is he? I mean, do you, I'm sure you've seen a little bit of a different side of him. Like, is there moments where he lets loose and he's just kind of the rah rah guy, or is he just kind of always? Um, when he gets fired up, he gets fired up. Well, dude, you could see that when he was pitching against Oregon State, man. He was he he had no problem letting them boys know that they weren't touching him, man. I thought that was all. And I feel like Vahiva's kind of like that a little bit too. Like Vahiva's yeah. so quiet. When we talk to him, he's so shy, so polite, and everything. But then he'll hit a home run and he'll just flip that bat and you know stare at the pitcher. And I'm like, this kid's got a little bit of an edge to him, yeah, you know. He's, an edge. he's definitely quiet. He's definitely like kind of to himself. But like you get him comfortable and you get him going, he's he gets out there. He pimp any uh, home runs against you? Did he? Did he? I mean, it was a good one too. <laughs> I always wonder what that's like whenever it's like, obviously you're pimping one off your own teammate. So I was like, I wonder if that's ever like, has that been an issue where you're like, no, I've never, I mean, I always see it. If, if I get you and get you and if you get me, there you go. You, know. you got any, uh, K strut celebrations queued up in case, you know, in um, case you need to talk your shit, man. I try not to think about it. I kind of just let it play out. I was telling Will, my favorite moment of his career was when he was pitching against Auburn, and he had a little like he he does he doesn't do like full on like dances or anything, but he has like he gets a little pep in his step and starts walking a little different when he strikes out the side or something. Yeah, Molina. Yeah, Molina. I love the little ball flip he did oh, the other day. Was that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, any, I'm trying to think. Do any of your teammates have? I mean, Robert Moore had. I guess. I don't know if that was that was maybe before your time. That was 2021 when he had all the bat flips and against South Carolina. But has there been any teammate bat flips that have stuck out to you or celebrations? Last year's Caleb Cowley, the spike. 
Was that against Bama? I think so. yes, it was. That'll always that'll stand out to me. Caleb Cowley was the Vahiva Alloy of last year. We're like all fall, all spring. You knew he was nasty. We knew he was nasty. And then like season starts and it starts off and all these fans are like freaking out. I'm like, just relax, man. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Man, last year's team, I tell you what, like I'm never going to forget last year. Like, it was just such a unique year, yeah. you know, just with that team and all they had to deal with. And it's just like, I don't know. I, I know that you said it was like a really close year, so I imagine you're going to view it that way too. But, yeah. uh, man, I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, what you guys have going on and just kind of see the story that you guys write, man. But, uh, man, hey, I appreciate you taking some time to, uh, to, to hang out with us here on the Bombastic Podcast, man. Uh, and, you know, if history's in any indication, you're about to start shoving soon because Gackle and McIntyre have been, been living it up, man. I've been nervous. I've been nervous every time they go out, especially Gackle. He's like, career debut was like two days after he came on the pod i was a little a little nervous but man he's what a stud man he's a stud. well jake man i really appreciate you coming on uh you know you're the man man we, we can't wait to watch you know all that you're about to do man we're excited uh hey see you in omaha see you in omaha man appreciate you man thank you